um, any um, interaction with the Liquor Control Commission. Um, we, we've not been real successful in helping them understand the level of saturation in this end of the city. And they have really looked at it globally from the city perspective of, well, the city of Lansing has a lot of licenses that are still able to be let or you're able to still assign them. They have yet to really res be responsive to the fact that we have presented number of neighbors and I worked on letters, worked on meetings, going to the meetings calls, um, that they, they really don't get the fact that we are saturated in a particular area with those licenses and specifically on sh particular streets. So my position is for anything else in the third ward, and I've stood alone many times on this, um, no more, no more. We have said that, we have sent letters. I have said that, my council colleagues have fought me on that and said, hey Lynn, and, and we sent a letter of no contest on a couple of things, Walgreens, my, our whole corner on MLK and Holmes, where there was going to be not even a trifecta, but there was going to be a quad there. We're going to have Colonial Bar, we're going to have the new liquor store. Walgreens was applying for a, a license, as well as Kroger's behind that bar. Enough, absolutely enough. So I'll continue to take that stance, Wes, and thank you for the question. Um, citywide, if there are areas where there really is not the level that we have that is creates such a saturation, I might be a little more prone to support it. However, if a neighborhood at all says, that's enough, we don't need anything else, I'm going to be responsive to the neighborhood. And I think you guys probably have seen that true of my stance and position on most things, is that the neighbors, they live there, we live there, they know best. And we, we usually base our positions on that. And is there a concern? Is there a concern besides the liquor license just the type of establishment that's going in there? I, in general, in yeah. the, yes, absolutely. Remember back three years ago when I said no more dollar stores, no more check cashing places, no more liquor stores. We have fought, and that is exactly what they are targeting still our area with. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot that we can do, I found out, if someone is going to lease to a particular tenant if they meet all of the requirements otherwise. However, we do try and encourage, and I know Andrea will talk about some of this with just l and &L and the process there, that we encourage them to have a, a, a myriad of offerings and opportunities for people to go into particular locations, but that is up to the landlord and the owner of the particular property. Margaret. And you said that often your city council colleagues don't support you when you're opposing this. Why not? Oh, well, one of the comments was, Aileen, you can't, because at one point I was blocking like three of them, um, you can't block all liquor licenses. I said, I can, and I'm going to in the third uh -huh. ward right now. We have enough. And they said, and literally it's on tape, it, they said it on the floor that, you know, you, you can't just take a, a no non-support position on this, Aileen, we have to be fair and look at all of them individually, which I do, I do. However, all of the ones that were coming through at that time were on MLK. They were on MLK and, and Mount Hope, They were, which isn't even third ward, it's second ward, but still, it's close enough. <laughs> then we were on Holmes and MLK, and then we went a little further down, and we were at the um, where the bicycle shop was. So literally, in the span of a year, we had three new licenses that were, that were approved. So my colleagues just thought I was being a little bit, I, I think, harsh. And their position was you can't block every liquor license that comes through Atlanta. In third word, sure I can. Sure I can. And, and that's been my position. And they know that now. And so they don't make those kind of comments anymore. But that initially, that was the comment of, are you going to block all of them? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really my goal at this point. So that, that was their comment. Okay. Any other questions on, on the teeny bikini, my position on liquor license and kind of the lay of the land on where we are with that? Was, are you aware of the type of business that is, uh, Aileen? I mean, it's essentially a sex business where, where uh, they do lap dances, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff, and it would be down in an uh, east side neighborhood, mm -hmm. which affects the city as a whole. Absolutely. And part of... Um, 
not having the liquor license attached to it, they won't come in if, I mean, if they don't get it. I believe they're going to, or people that apply are always going to be granted the liquor license. We have yet to have one that's been denied. <laughs> Unfortunately, very literally, good. and I know some of us followed it very, very closely, specifically on the Mount Hope location, and we, we counted, let me come up with it, eight, nine, mm -hmm. eight, eight establishments between I think we went more than yeah, because it's, yeah. Yeah, we went from, actually we went from the highway to highway, yeah. 496, 96, and we said there are eight opportunities to buy liquor mm -hmm. in that small strip of, of property, and that made no sense to us. And to them, they were more concerned with the edifice and the facade of what the people were going to put up because they compared it to, well, we won't look like M9, we're going to be a very nice upscale what they sold them and pitched mm, very them, much so. pointing at Anita because she was at all of the hearings, was very, very much so something different. Of It's going to be upscale. We're going to have nice wines that you can take with uh, nice sandwiches and take home with you as we travel um, up and down MLK. People will stop in, get their food, go home to Eaton Rapids or out further. And then we had the big red liquor and lottery. And the other and one on Mount Hope and, and MLK not has not right. been cleaned up. Correct. Which was their Which promise. was their, they were going to clean that up and make it look. There is no ordinance about the other issue that you brought up? The adult activities that go on. Um, there are ordinances, however, um, just like a um, Omar's downtown, mm -hmm. as long as you stay within um, <coughs> partial nudity. I know you're, years you're, ago you're safe. when Deja Vu went on to Martin Luther King, there were people standing outside with protest signs but didn't stop anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Use this. Well, they didn't take down their pink sign. So yeah. would we be better off, if, since the mm -hmm. state liquor commission is going to pretty much give everyone a liquor license, would we be better off trying to target the, the actual property owners? That would be a better bet, and we've tried to have open dialogue and communication, but again, they fall into the, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do, um, which is a part of what we'll discuss today on the marijuana moratorium and kind of where we're going with the ordinance there, because that actually will put us in a different position than we're able to be in with the Liquor Control Commission, because they take the authority for that particular um, licensing out of our hands as a city. So... Um, with that, level two. Um, <laughs> Kathy, do you want to share a little more, or do you want me to just kind of go off the cuff on my thoughts? 